Welcome home, neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Michigan Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesian, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lavia, Corbaugh, Alani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Hopper Creek, Creek, Grand Floridian, Saratoga Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening. To- and you're listening. You're listening, you're listening to-, to my, to my, 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 to my. my. Well, welcome home, everybody, to episode 82 of the Mighty VC Points Community Hall live podcast. My name is Chad Pennycuff, and I am your host tonight. And before we jump into today's show about budgeting for Disney, I want to do a quick shout out of thanks to our friends over at Monera Financial for sponsoring season six. I guess it's we're into season seven for sponsoring season seven of the Mighty VC Points podcast. It's been so long with this move that I, I just can't get my season straight. Anyways, if you're paying more than 9.9% on a DVC loan, head on over to Monera Financial. We've been able to help members that are paying more than that refinance their DVC contracts or do a cash out refinance and be able to save all kinds of money. Believe it or not, 9.9% is, is a competitive rate when you start comparing some of those rates that Disney charges people. So we have helped listeners save hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can buy a new contract and finance through them. You can buy resale and finance through them. MoneraFinancial.com. Let them know you heard about them here on the Mighty VC Points podcast. So I'd also like to do a um, uh, welcome back to the show, uh, Mr. Dan Clamert. So how are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing great, Chad. How are you doing? I Thanks can't complain. I'm, I'm excited to have you come back in and talk budgeting with us. And I know you've, you've been with us a couple of times. So welcome back. And I'd also like Thank to you. welcome, I think, first time to the live stream show, Mr. Ron Shamert. How you doing, Ron? Chad, I am outstanding. How you doing? And yes, you are 100% correct. First first time on the Community Hall Live. Okay, yeah. You, you're, you're in the audience commenting a lot. And yeah, we got a topic that's that's your specialty tonight. So we decided to just pull you on in and Thanks for joining us here, Ron. Glad to be here. Right. And then I'd like to welcome back to the show as well, Anna. So how are you doing tonight, Anna? Good. How are you doing? Doing great. And, you know, just a little bit about my background. Before I launched the whole Mighty VC Points deal, I spent about a decade with the Dave Ramsey organization as a personal finance and budget coach. So personal finance budget is strong in my wheelhouse. And you're going to see a whole bunch of those influences come out in some of my answers tonight. But we've got four really good questions, and it's really pertinent of topic given that inflation is kind of out of control. We're not getting pay raises, but everything else is going up. So it's just kind of forcing us to budget a little bit more to go to Disney. So Gina, go ahead and, and throw our first question up there. And, and what are the ways that you budget for Disney? Or what is it that you budget for when you come back in to do Disney? So Dan, you want to kick us off here? Yeah, sure, Chad. So uh, our DVC contracts are paid for here, but we do save for annual dues by basically setting aside money each paycheck. We pay our dues annually, typically, and we use gift cards. I'll cover more on that later. But um, so we also bought our first direct contract on the the Chase Disney Visa and use those reward rewards then to uh, buy some park tickets. We paid that off immediately but um and then uh, we bought some re- resale contracts as well too and we put the deposits that uh, the largest we could put on credit cards to then use those re i guess those those points basically those miles for okay. travel towards rewards travel so okay so it sounds like you budget for dues and then somewhat you're planning for annual passes right exactly yeah yeah, we, okay. we're trying to keep the annual pass train going as well for the renewals, which they're up uh, next month, I think, already. Again. You do not want to get off that annual pass train because you might not <laughs> get back on it. It's, exactly. exactly. It's brutal. It Ron, brutal. what about you? What are the things that you budget for in your Disney life? Yeah, we budget for everything, basically. Uh, I'm a big a big plan uh, planner. I'm a big fan of planning, setting the goals, uh, implementing strategies, and then execution of those goals in order to uh, be able to do it efficiently. So uh, when we were, when we were getting to purchase DVC, it was really just a matter of 
setting the goal. I did a lot of research, uh, figured out how I wanted to do it, what I wanted to, how what I wanted to spend, set the goal, and uh, and basically basically got there. I mean, it just, yeah. you know, and, and with goals, it's, it's important to just um, number one, have a separate account for whatever you're saving for that. That's number one. Number two, make sure the goal is written down because if it's not written down, it's just, it's yep. just a, a wish uh, similar to what you probably have gone through with the Ramsey program, uh, Chad, and then basically put milestones or checkpoints in place to make sure that you're, you're going to hit that goal, but give yourself a deadline. Um, Big thing for me, and you'll hear this probably commonly throughout the rest of the answers as well, is we always start with the end in mind. And uh, I'll go a little bit more into that, but start with the end in mind and then backtrack it. And it's a little bit easier to hit it. Okay. So it now are you are you budgeting for food, merch, like all yes. of it? Okay. Yes. Yes. When we so and and one thing slightly different than what Dan does is is because I have a lot of my cash working for me. I choose not to pay the dues all up front because I'd rather let that cash work throughout the year. If there were any type of finance charge that DVC was charging, then I would of course pay it all up front. But because it, it's almost like that credit card that you get free financing for six months, you know, take it <laughs> and, and pay it off over time. So your money can stay working for you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple of nickels of interest there. You know? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. It adds up and, and, and people do that a couple of different ways. And what are some of the things that is in your Disney budget? What is it that you budget for? So we budget, we're a little bit different than everybody else. Cause we actually do, we financed all of our contracts in the beginning. Um, I was listening to one of your most recent shows where the, the people financed cause it was cheaper ended up being cheaper in the long run. And that's kind of the way it is with us is because of the, how much it's gone up finance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then trying to pay it off was kind of worked best for us. And so we, we budget for the, for the payment dues. And then um, we really try and pay cash when we go on vacation. So mm -hmm. I budget out savings every week because we get paid weekly. And then we also get little small bonuses throughout the year. And so um, mm -hmm. pretty much everything goes to vacations. <laughs> that we get hey, and so it's just it's yeah it's just donna bickert it has a line that's just stuck with me that just says the mouse gets all the money so yeah. it, it's kind of the way it is for us in our our, yeah. our disney dvc lifestyle so yeah you know, and we have a lot of bank accounts that we you know i'm constantly hiding money so that we we pretend we don't have it <laughs> yeah well i mean that's that's a valid tip and technique and mm -hmm. what we do in our house is I just sit down and annually I figure this out and I go, okay, here's kind of a high estimate for dues. And that's come down significantly since we scaled down in, in, in contracts here. So now it's around $2,700 for our dues. We have 325 points. And so that's kind of what I put into there. And then I put in some money for annual passes. Now I can buy the pixie dust pass for the kids as a Florida resident. So that saves me a little bit of money. And so that's $500 a year that times three of them or four with Laura. So there's another two grand. And then pretty much I'll throw some money in there for airfare because they got to get here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of set aside, you know, before we could get $200 flights. Now you're, you're solidly in 400 to go from Detroit to Orlando. It is really, 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 really sad as to what's happened to airfare as a result of the pandemic and everything else. But I kind of total all that up and then I get paid bi-weekly. So I divide it out by 26 and then I have an FDIC savings account that's just plain dull and boring. And I use the envelope method. That's my envelope as an FDIC in insured savings account. And it just says the Disney fund. And if I come into this and it comes out to, I need to put 500 bucks every two weeks when I get paid, it goes right down the list. Now that might sign odd to you, but I also figure out what it is for the house, what it is for the car, what it is for all of this. So I get paid and the money just transfer, 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 transfer to the little accounts and it just happens. Right. And then the mortgage company pulls it out of the mortgage savings account. The car company pulls it out of the car one that runs a little mm -hmm. hot so that you've got money in there for repairs or tires or whatever else. And it's kind of on autopilot. I mean, I'm in and out of my money in 20 minutes of paycheck. It's, it's flat. Th that, that's a long time for me. Okay. 
Be, because it's just like rinse and repeat. I've got my little system down and it's all about perfecting the envelope method. And, and that's kind of what we budget for and, and kind of how we do it. So I think I, I, I moved into the next question, but let's come in and, and see what some of the audience are saying that, that they kind of put in here and budget for. And um, so Frederica says money working for you. Where do you keep your cash savings? That's a good question because I keep mine in like uh, an online bank that pays 0.5% interest. In today's market, it's losing money with inflation, but it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Okay. But Ron, I think she was directing this question at you. Where do you keep cash at? Yeah. So I keep cash similarly. I'll keep it some into a, a liquid savings account, but I also have some investment accounts that either will be money market. I'll watch what's out there. And if there's any that are better than your basic savings account, I'll jump onto that. Uh, some of my cash, I keep a little bit longer term uh, so that I'm even if it's a one or two or three year lock, I know that I'll have those those dollars coming at that point. So I think a little bit longer term uh, when I'm talking okay. about my cash. So it's probably a little bit different than than what most people are accustomed to. Uh, yeah. Well, if, if you're using I, like a yeah. CD ladder strategy or something Correct. along those lines, yeah. then but I don't want to get too involved with yeah. that, with the conversation to to confuse people. But there are there are methods available. Yeah, yeah. So that every so often you get your hands on access a little to extra, something correct mm -hmm. like that. So okay, that's a fair question. But uh, I, I think the key here is FDIC insured savings accounts or something with some kind of a guaranteed value to it. Mm -hmm. Is if you're going to do any kind of a short term budgeting, which would be saving cash for something less than five years, correct. That's kind of my bogey and, and goal and. And an FDIC insured bank account is one of the only financial products that I can definitely say everybody needs. Okay. And not get in trouble from the securities and exchange. <laughs> right. It, it, <laughs> yep. I, I, I mean, that's just, you know, such a, a great product. And so, but somebody on Facebook is saying they're planning for multiple trips to Disneyland each year in one trip to the world. So then that's going to come back into, are you getting annual passes and tickets and what goes into your, your budget thing? And somebody else on Facebook says, I save so much money by driving and not flying. That is going to be especially true going forward and doing it three times a year for the past five years now. Also save um, X dollars per month. that just goes to vacation and thank God for our 401k and pensions for the future. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you kind of, you got your budget going for your your future plans for your four hundred one k. All that's in place, and what's left, you can go burn and play, and and that's kind of a a standard strategy that a lot of Americans do. And and Gina just says she puts money aside weekly for Disney as well, and I think that's that the key is you just got to make this a part of your regular deal, mm -hmm. or wait till you get a big bonus or something along those lines. So somebody is saying that they use the envelope system as well. Every month we put money into the vacation bucket for park tickets and annual <clears throat> passes. And yeah, the envelope system is old school, tried and true. And I just kicked it up to the online age with the online savings accounts. And Frederica says we're, we're lucky with a 0.01% here. So I don't consider that working for me. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I barely consider the 0.5 that like Discover Bank is giving me on, on my money. And, and there's better ones out there than them now. I just haven't gotten around to firing them yet, but I need to because they dropped the ball on some things for me. And, um, oh, that's Kathy saying this. So, okay. Well, I think we've covered that question. So let's head on over to our next question, Gina. And so it says, how do you set aside your cash? I think we kind of answered this one for me, the envelope system. And every time I get paid, I have a system down, rinse and repeat, and I tune it annually. And that's what really truly works for me. I, I, I like a, a, a emotional safety net gets unlocked, right? Knowing that I have this cash sitting there and it's, it's going to go work for me and, and do what I'm telling it to do and go for my family. And it's not going to end up at uh, the cheeseburger cart over at uh, Magic Kingdom one day because, yeah. Although I do have another budget for that. I have a, a, another envelope for that, and that's Disney gift cards. And I think, Dan, we might get into that in a little bit. But do you guys have anything else to answer to this question, or did, did we cover it? Yeah, I also use um, 
Apple Pay. And it's kind of, it's the same thing as the envelope method, I guess, mm-hmm. is what I use with transferring everything out every week. Um, we get paid weekly. And, but um, Apple Pay is another one instead of gift cards. Um, I use the Apple Pay because if anything were to happen and, you know, we had a big expense, our money's not tied up in Disney gift cards. We can actually get to it if we needed to. Mm-hmm. I, I go old school too with the old change jar. Got the big water water jug from the uh, <laughs> the the you know water cooler next to my desk. And and the funny thing is, I, I changed my mindset a little bit. Whereas I was that guy that if I was at a store and and you know being with gray in my hair and and you know with an age starting a little bit older than a lot of people, uh, I like to carry cash. I'm not a big debit card guy. So mm-hmm. uh, and then w- w- you know I used to dig in the pocket if it was you know. Eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. I'm looking for the the difference to make it nine dollars, right, and get just bills back. Well, I kind of do the opposite now. I want all the change. I'm walking around and I got both pockets full of change. If I'm out shopping for a day, throw that in the jar, and and I've actually kind of upped it a little bit to even singles. I'll I'll only do that if I can round it off to a five. But I'll even start throwing the singles in there and only carry five dollar bills or higher. It helps to to accumulate it a little bit quicker. Okay. Yeah, so we actually use a couple apps uh, for some of this stuff. Uh, yeah. Like, um, you know, uh, you you had mentioned uh, the kind of setting things aside in the change jar. I don't know if you're familiar with a, an app called Acorns. Acorns, We yeah. use that. Yeah, so that basically rounds up all transactions mm-hmm. and puts that in a separate side of, uh, yeah. you know, savings account that we then use for, you know, buying things, gift cards, yeah. things along those lines. Yeah. Uh, we're big also in other things like Kroger fuel perks and mm-hmm. Sam's club buying gift cards or, you know, wherever the deals are basically following those mm-hmm. deals. Uh, and there's other Facebook groups, ways to save for Disney. Yeah. My wife is big into those. There's apps like I bought a swag bucks, Dosh, some mm-hmm. of those uh, apps that do cash back and things like that. Then using that, turning those around and getting gift cards, uh, you know, do the gift cards yeah. pay stuff. The high level there is the stacking technique, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've got to come back in and use a credit card that gives great rebates along with the Dosh or IATA or whatever it is, the app, right? And and you kind of stack three or four things up. And when you do, you're getting a pretty good deal, okay? But you got to play the game. Right. And, and it's work playing the game. Let's be honest. Okay. It is. Yeah. And if you don't enjoy that level of work, then don't do it. But nerds like Dan and I, we like, we, we we get a rise out of that. Okay. (laughs) It's a fun challenge. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause see Ron looks at this and and he's saying, Hey, I'm going to have my money working for me. I put my money into that FDIC savings account. Mm -hmm. And then when my local grocery store puts Meyer gift cards on sale and I can get 10% in free groceries, which my wife pays me out of the grocery budget back. So I'm getting 10% off my Disney costs that way. And so I've already got the money sitting aside for Disney. It's already earmarked. And then I'll just go get the gift cards and load them up. And I've got, Two on my Apple wallet. I've got one for podcast stuff I can expense and one for personal stuff I can expense. So if it's like research level expense, I'll, I'll use the the podcast one. Mm-hmm. If it's just me grabbing a another, like my 50th spring roll that the tax person <laughs> is going to be like, dude, no, you wrote off 49 of these, the 50th, no more. Right. Uh, then I use the personal account for that. Okay. But uh, that's a really great way of, of coming back in and, and, and doing this as well. And I'll even, you know, look at this and prepay my dues with gift cards. So like the complete polar of, of Ron, I look at it like, yeah, 0.5% in much, but I'd rather walk into this and going, hey, I'm not sitting on Disney gift cards that could be lost. I can prepay dues and they'll take it and knock it off my, my balance. And then in December, I don't owe them anything. And I hate owing people money. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Like it's it's just like it's 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 ten years of the Dave Dave Ramsey system. I do not like owing people money, DVC or anybody else. So that's kind of my little trick there. But okay. Um, and then anybody else have any uh, questions here? Or should we come into some listener comments? Is like this. Somebody saying on Facebook that they like to prepay dues as well, and. Once I realized I could do that and I didn't have to worry that I'm sitting on a couple, because remember when we had all those points, my dues were north of 10 K. Yeah. 
and I didn't want to be sitting on 10 K of gift cards. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I couldn't go out there and just buy 10 K all at one time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when like the uh, investigation thief people start swarming <laughs> in on you. Like, what are you doing? Buying 10 K word of gift card. No, 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 no. You had to do it a little at a time. Right. So I, I could do a whole deal on getting accused of from fraud with gift cards because <laughs> AM. This is the AML department, Chad. We're yeah, gonna, yeah. chat yeah. with you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the anti money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then somebody's with Ron here saying that they prefer to pay dues monthly and they don't find it that bad at all. And yeah, there's there's different ways to do it. And and. Let's see this comment. Um, I can't do those gift cards, Costco, Sam's anymore. I just find that every time I go to the stores to get them, I end up buying other items I normally wouldn't buy. Mm -hmm. So I only do it when I buy it online. And yeah, that's why I typically stick to my gift cards at uh, Myers, And because I can roll in and I've got it down to pretty much an art now that, that I can use all the accounts and, and come through and hit it. And Somebody else says, yep, old school change guard. Change jars pays for our gas. Round trip and food stops. So that's another great method. And I actually have a Coke bottle that I have had since junior high. It's a big plastic Coke bottle. The green one? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like slightly <laughs> green. Oh, yeah. yep. It's you're, you're, you're talking like 30 some odd year old uh -huh. plastic Coke bottle. Now yeah. it's, it's pretty like tinted and yeah, it's, 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 it's just kind of like tinted is, is the best yeah. way I can describe it. Cause it's old, <laughs> but I wouldn't give it up cause it's been with me for so long. And Frederica says rounding up is a brilliant way to save. Um, that used to be my SB money and I'll switch over to Disney mad money. And Andrew is saying he's a big fan of the Chase Disney Visa card for about everything we buy. We use the rewards for food and wine as well. If we're going to spend money, we might as well get something out of it. I agree with you, Andrew, but I want more than their 1%. Okay. And I don't want to pay annual fees on cards. Like, mm -hmm. and, unless I'm really getting something special, like the Amex card for, for, for Delta, which, you know, buy one, get one free tickets and the, the club level food and drinks and all that is, yeah, I'm, I'm going bougie on that one. But um, yeah, I, I don't like the the Chase card. I, I think there's much better options out there. You can go to a, a Citibank double cash card and get 2% with no annual fee on everything. So to me, that's that that's what I would prefer doing. But we all have our, our own different ways, right? Ch Chad, if I could jump in, I think the common theme here is discipline. Uh, no matter what method you use, you have to have the discipline to to make sure that you execute that method yeah. because what I find and the reason why we do it the way we do it is uh, if you create it and, and some trips are more expensive than others. I, I alluded earlier to a big trip with my granddaughter coming up next year. That's going to cost a lot more. So I'm budgeting a lot more for that. So what I do is I create the bill and then I pay the bill monthly instead of randomly taking a certain amount out of my check. I've got a, a decent idea of, of what I want to spend for each particular mm -hmm. trip. And that way I can, like you said, with the envelope system, but mm -hmm. it's, it's the discipline to do it instead. It, well, it's the old pay yourself first, right? Pay yourself first uh, and don't just pay everything off and then take what's left and save some. So I think we're all on the same page there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's just being proactive and getting ahead of your money. And mm -hmm. there, there's an eight ball curve here that I've helped thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people get ahead of. Mm -hmm. And it really is, is you've, in order to really make your money work for you, the, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. You got to get ahead of that eight ball in terms of the debt monster, the interest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then everything else is a little gravy with the credit card rebates and the, hey, the 0.5% interest that they throw at me and, and, and other things along those lines. So, yeah, that's it, Ron. Discipline, getting ahead of the eight ball and being intentional and focused. That, that, that is the core skills that you need to, to win at anything financially, not just Disney. So Gina, our next question here is, um, what are the tips for travel expenses? Phew. Okay. Like 
this one, man, I used to be a big fan of spirit and buying tickets at the airport and, and saving money. And then they started burning me and my friends with canceled flights and no way around it and poor customer service. And I'm just, I can't do it anymore. I, I, I can't do it. So now I only fly Delta and I stay loyal to them for their, their frequent flyer miles, their loyalty, their everything else. And so I've got 200,000 plus miles that I can spend on the kids to come down. So that, that's my, my, my go-to strategy right now. But even then my miles are getting devalued because they're tied to cash values. So right. yeah. 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 That, that That's kind of it is. And we did drive down this last trip for spring break and Laura said no more unless I'm coming for the whole summer or a month or something along those lines. It's just too much drive time to time playing when, when you've got to drive 24 hours to get here. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. So Dan, what do you got here for us for travel tips and expenses? Yeah, I got a lot to actually hear me out on this. Some of this, this is a little, uh, um, involved, but uh, okay. we've become masters at some of these credit card offers. And I used to travel through work. I think uh, you had mentioned loyalty to an airline if you can. I think that's key. So for us in our mm -hmm. market, Southwest really has worked well for us. So when we were traveling, when I was traveling through work, it was uh, you know signing up for the rapid awards, mm -hmm. banking those points. Then took it a step further. I was close to getting their companion pass, which is basically you pick a companion and they travel with you anywhere for free. Or is just it the, the same taxes. companion like or is it one companion every trip? It's uh, it's the same companion, but you can change it three times per year. Okay. So you can change that companion three times per year. So we ended up getting a Southwest Rapper Awards card at that point in time to get the companion pass. Mm -hmm. We were able to get the companion pass, keep it through there. We actually then took our expenses and started funneling them through our credit cards first paying everything off off to your point ron yep. everything off monthly here is key otherwise you're gonna fall behind and this doesn't make any sense but so we funnel everything through the credit cards basically there's other things like a rapper rewards dining program you can get points mm -hmm. the shopping program you can get points all that funnels into your rapper rewards these are all great ideas there's other offers there's special offers like throughout the year that can give you bonus points for shopping okay. doing your taxes things like that to just keep your eyes open for that so then um once we had earned the companion pass we then switched to the chase sapphire reserve card which is basically three times points on travel and dining and then we also um you know through that there's sign up bonus offers through this uh, through these programs you get lots of miles uh, and then when you funnel all your expenses through it depends on really the expenses. So grocery shopping, for example, that we get three times points on uh, the Sapphire it, Preferred card, which is not the reserve. So that's different. So <laughs> we funnel our online grocery shopping through that basically to get the three time points there. Um, so then, you know, we effectively those cards. So they have pulling us up a little benefits. bit out of the yep, weeds but, you're playing yep. the airline mile games and you're playing credit card games and maximizing all of your stuff there and Basically, you're you're really yep. working that companion pass which if you're not familiar with southwest yep. airlines it's i buy one ticket i get to a free companion that goes with me yeah and that so is a killer wife, perk yeah yeah so my wife then applied for the southwest card now we have two companion passes we've basically <laughs> so our kids fly with us free every time, everywhere we go okay. now, basically, because we've earned double companion passes effectively through these offers. So, okay. So you it, each it, hit that status and now yeah, yes. you, you get two buy one, get ones, right? Exactly. So like for Hawaii, we're going to Alani here in 50 some days and uh, we're doing it all on points. So it's a hundred percent paid for on points. And the other thing too, is to watch these airlines, they change flights that, you know, they go up, down, when you go back, when you go back and look and they change the flights, the flight prices down, you get, you get the points back. Basically mm -hmm. you can adjust these and get point credit yeah. back. That is a, a really cool feature of Southwest as well. Yep. Delta is now starting yep. to play a little bit in that where you can rebook sure. your flight at the, the lower cost and then get an e-credit to apply. So that's yep. another great savings technique as well. Nice. 
And then if they change the flight on you too, that's another thing mm -hmm. where then you can then go back within a 14 day window and change the flight to any more expensive flight at no change, no cost extra to you. So we play that game a lot too, or we'll book the cheapest flight knowing that when they rework their schedule, typically 60 days out, we're going to then get an email and then we book it, book it to a better time that works better for us. And there's no cost difference to us for doing that. Oh yeah. That's another great way to work the Southwest system. So yeah. Yeah, I, I think the key there is to be loyal to one airline and really learn that airline. If, it works. if, if I were to exactly. give it as like a, a deal, yes. because I know a lot from various different groups and people that are Southwest people, but Detroit is not a Southwest hub. Like they yeah. barely ever fly there. Yep. <laughs> Delta is and Spirit is. So those two programs I know. And yeah. Yep. Ron, what are some of your, your tips for travel expenses? Yeah, Dan, uh, Dan pretty much covered the whole gamut right there. One thing I will say, though, is when you do pick those cards, make sure they're ones that you're going to be able to utilize. Um, like yeah. you said, Chad, I, I live a stone's throw from O'Hare, right? So if you've ever been in Chicago and, and fought traffic from where I live to try to get to Midway, where, uh, where Southwest has a lot more flights, uh, believe it or not, I could drive twice as far and get to MK up in Milwaukee by Dan before I could get to Midway Airport, which is half the distance with traffic. So you utilize the utilize the one that it, so I use American. I, I'm okay. big with American Airlines because they have a, a robust amount of flights going out of O'Hare on a daily basis. A lot more nonstops. That's the one thing about Southwest as well. Uh, there seem to be a lot less nonstops available. So don't say, I mean, if, if convenience is a factor for you, okay. yeah, the, the point system can be great and, and uh, certainly benefit you. But if you're, if you're going to not want to use it or it's going to give you anxiety, do something. It, whatever you do is going to be good for you. So do something you're going to be comfortable with and, and pick a, a card or an airline that you're going to be able to utilize. And, and like Dan said, same with American. You can attach a bunch of different cards to that rewards program. So no matter... You could use five different credit debit slash whatever cards you're using, and they're all going to give American Airlines points. So, and then follow the bonuses, find them. You get emails about them. If extra yeah. five five times points for groceries for the month of May. Well, yep. that's great because I'm using them for groceries anyway. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Run everything everything through your cards that you're going to get maximize your points on or your benefits on, and just pay it off at the end of the month. Yeah, yep. and and be sure you pay it off because Discipline. if right. if, yes. if you can't pay it off, all of this is just don't do it. You're right. losing yeah, mortgage, do it. okay? Right. Exactly. It, it's you you you're losing more than you could ever do. So yes, and, and statistically, a lot of people don't. Okay, correct, <laughs> like, correct. <laughs> a lot I'm of conversations being, about that. <laughs> a lot yeah. of conversations about that with people. Yeah, yeah, and, and okay, um, and Anna, what's your thoughts here? Yeah, so I'm, I'm the people that, that cannot pay it off at the end of the month because I'd put too much, but uh, so. Well, that's good. I'm glad is... we've got some rep representation yeah. here because. <laughs> I mean, I just, I know how we are and we'd, I'd get, we'd get too excited. So, <laughs> and put too much on it, but, um, you know, there, there's five of us in my family. So we drive because flying gets really expensive with five. Really um, fast. And, I trust me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the airport uh, near us flies, uh, Allegiant flies to Sanford, so it's the wrong airport too, and then it just, it just, it's, so we just, it's nine to ten hours, so we just drive, and it's actually a pretty easy drive. Um, and it's and probably so, not that much longer, because by the time you get to the airport not, two hours early, and, you know, time to get to the airport, yeah. the flight time, and then you've got an hour from when you get to Sanford to drive to Orlando yeah. anyways, and then you got to yeah, run a car. Yeah. And then you've got to worry about like, are we going to make it? Is it going to get canceled? And so we just, we've just become very accustomed to driving. Um, and I use, you know, fuel points from my grocery store to, to, you know, help with the first tank of gas. Um, I am flying down that one day uh, in May for um, the Guardians preview. And I use an extension on my browser called Honey. And I was actually able to save $25 each way. So it's $45 round trip. Nice. on Allegiant. <laughs> so, and I use honey for everything. You can even put it on your phone. Um, and I, just by using that extension, I can get about 50 to $60 each year 
in gift cards in addition to like the savings that it'll find me. Um, and I use those, you know, for turn those into Amazon gift cards, which I can then use to get ready for the trip or use for food once we get down there. Um, and yeah. then, you know, and, you know, and yeah. And then I'm sure at some point we'll talk about the, the gift card deal site because <laughs> that's, that's a great one too. So. Yeah. And even my Myers gift cards, they have Delta Southwest. And when I walk into Costco now, I'm seeing Alaska Air buy a $500 card for $450. Mm -hmm. Those are all great little tips that you can come back in and just get 10% on. If, mm -hmm. if you're ahead of the eight ball and you can set money aside, have it there, and then go buy this, again, it's the rich get richer. And I can't stress the importance of that enough and, and how rewarding it is to just get ahead of that. Okay. And I yeah, don't one wanna... last thing, Chad, I would just uh, add about the, you had alluded to this earlier. I think with some of these cards, they do have annual fees, but mm -hmm. a lot of those then include things like we got a TSA pre-check paid for, mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've got meals in airport lounges, uh, you know, lift pink memberships where you get discounts on rides. So, and then also travel credits then on the airline. So they pay you back yeah. on, you know, X number of percentage of your annual due or your annual fee on the card. So that is something to consider, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, take advantage of those travel perks then. Yeah. It, it, playing any of these games is just, you have to enjoy doing it and you have to like get a, a thrill out of it. And you, you've got to play by the rules and do everything that they're, they're, they're doing to do. Cause believe it or not, they are trying to trick you into spending more money or money that you wouldn't spend or overspending. That is the name of the game. They are not just yeah. giving you free stuff for the point of doing it. They're here to like sink their claws into people and rope them into debt. And You've really got to like, if you're going to play these games, you really got to pay attention and Absolutely. you got to be on your A game. I'm just being yeah. brutally honest here. Cause you are. Yeah. The credit I, mean, I spent 10 years helping people everyone. that, that got in that, that, that snare out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and now that I'm out and I'm kind of away from it all, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm putting all the safety me mechanisms, mechanisms in place for the discipline, the structure, the intentional focus, all of that so that I don't end up back there again, because that, that's not a good place to be. And okay. Um, I think we've covered ours on screen. Let's come back over to the audience here and see what they are saying here. Um, and somebody on Facebook saying, agree, Ron, discipline is principle for all money management. And it, true. Even we were, Ron and I were just talking off screen the other day and even investing it's, you have to be a disciplined in your approach and everything that you do. And uh, somebody else is a uh, shout out to the companion fair for a flight when we can. And there are more options to, to save in the U S than Canada. Unfortunately, that seems to be the, the case as I talk to more of our Canadian friends and, and people over there. And I know Grant Peters who t tunes into a lot of shows, I'll pick up a lot of gift cards for Grant and, um, help him out a little bit that way as well. Cause their gift card deals are just non-existent in Canada from what, what we can figure out. And Jonathan Wood saying, um, if you don't have a dominant airline in your hometown, there is value to being a free agent and always getting the best deal. I played the free agent game for quite a few years and yeah, you can, you can very well do that. And then Frederica saying, I use a different strategy with cards. I'm a heavy packer. It means I have a bag going into hold. So if I fly an airline at least twice a year, that pays for my card fees. Yes. Like Delta gives you the, the free bags. If you have the Amex and yep. spirit, just, I mean, well, there is no free on spirit. Like you're, you're getting nailed, but Southwest doesn't charge for bags to begin with. So. That, that's something you, you factor into when you compare rates there as well. But yes, yes. I mean, my, this platinum Amex is $550 a year annual fee, but it includes. Mine was $750 this, this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it included pre-check global, mm -hmm. you know, I, I go to the lounge every single mm -hmm. flight. And again, I fly home at least once a month, at least once a month. So that's two flights a month. And so I'm doing a meal and a drink and 
it's easily 30 bucks every time I walk in the door that I'm saving. So I figure I, I eat my and drink my way to, to a free card there. That that's at least my goal. <laughs> Good strategy. And, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And Jonathan says playing the game also requires a spouse that will tolerate the complexity of which card to use when, when to use a gift card, et cetera. That is very, 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 very true. And so I'm very, very, very good at this game. Laura's just like, I can't, I, I, I don't know what card to use when I, I can't, I can't keep it all straight. And I'm like, well, the Costco cards 4% on gas, the, this is this, this and this, right. You know, you either nerd out on it or you don't. And if you don't, you just got to keep it simple and keep that spouse on board and working a system together. So, yeah, yeah. But she, she was the same way. And, and, oh, um, Grant was saying, thanks, Chad. That's me commenting. Uh, you helped me out a lot. And, and that's Grant. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we, we kind of covered some of our travel expenses there to be loyal to an airline, work their system, work their cards, um, work their special offers as well. But again, the key word here is work. You are working for this. It is nothing for free. Don't think for a minute that it's for free. And it, it, yeah. So, okay, let's move on to our final question tonight. And then um, tips for saving for groceries and cooking. So how do you guys do food here? And I'll lead this off. One of the really cool things that we do on vacation is I budget a little bit for restaurants. So we have some gift card money set aside for that. But because we have a disciplined grocery budget every single week, when we're on vacation, we still have that money budgeted for groceries every single week. So I don't have to budget for food delivery to the villa or anything along those lines because we just have our normal grocery budget that's already set in place. And that really truly does work out well for us. So, so that's my tip there. And then I tack a little bit onto the gift cards for, for uh, uh, food and dining out because I tend to pay for everything at Disney with a gift card. Cause I know I can get 14% off of them doing all of my credit card rebate, grocery tricks, everything else. So I see it as a 14% discount on everything at the mouse that stacks with my annual pass discount for another 10 or 20%, depending on if it's food, merch, or whatever. So that's how I can stretch my Disney dollars. The farthest is playing the gift card game, stacking the annual pass, DVC, looking to see if there happens to be a Chase Visa offer out there for an extra 20% if you eat at, I think the last time I did it was Pecos Bills. They were offering a special offer if you paid for your bill with a D Disney visa there. So I'll play their games, right? That's that's kind of it. So Dan, what, what's your tips here for groceries and cooking? Yeah, I agree with all those. Those are great points, Chad. Uh, you know, you had mentioned Southwest bags fly free. So we've been known to pack groceries actually in a suitcase before within the weight mm -hmm. limit, including wine. Uh, I don't know if you heard of like wine wings. It's a uh, packaging for traveling with wine. That uh, okay. is a, a nice way to travel with the, the wine. If you, that, that suits your, uh, your needs there as well. Uh, and then if we're, uh, if we're not doing that, we have had groceries delivered. You know, there's many of those grocery delivery services out there. We, we don't ever really pay for water in the parks. That's, you know, a thing we try to avoid uh, either bringing refillable waters uh Oh, We've see, I can't to, handle the Disney, Disney, Florida I can't, tank water. No, I can't either. Yeah. We've been known to refill. And it's just Disney, right? Yes. <laughs> My yeah, house yeah. is literally on the edge of property and I have Orange County water. I don't, I don't drink that skank water stuff here. It, it, it doesn't enter my house. It's only Disney that has the Florida skank water. I used to call it all Florida skank water. I, I got, I got to apologize to the rest of the state now and just call That's it funny. Disney skank water. Okay. Yeah. We've been known to refill some of our bottles of water in like the uh, fitness lounge or fitness uh, centers, you know, at like sturdy branches at Wilderness Lodge. We'll be down there filling our water. Oh, yeah. And stuff like they, have that. The, they have the infused uh, water down there, if I remember. That's filtered or, yeah, infused or whatever. So, you know, refill that way is, uh, you know, another trick. Uh, also, I'm getting in trouble for this. My wife is notorious for pocketing the peanut butters and the jellies at the quick services for breakfast in the villas, you know, those types of things, our toast or our bagels. Uh, so saving money that way. 
but you know we have ordered groceries and cooked in the villas too i mean that's certainly an option but uh we do have we do like to go out and uh you know do try some new dining experiences too while we're down there of course i would have to admit that there's probably some peanut butter in some of my houses that uh I, I, well, I mean, you, you pick it up and if you don't use it, I'm not going to throw it out and waste it. Like, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Ron, any, uh, sticky peanut butter fingers at your house or I cannot <laughs> confirm or on, deny buddy? whether or not we might walk away with an extra <laughs> peanut butter or jelly or anything from the, uh, from the stands there. I, 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 I don't recall. I plead the fifth. Uh, no, but you guys touched on most of it though, ordering groceries in advance. We're big fans of that. Uh, no matter what we're doing. And we love to eat out. We love to dine out. I love to, to, to mm. go to all the restaurants and I enjoy that. But a way to do that is, you know, make sure you're in a one bedroom or bigger with a kitchen and cook breakfast every day before you go. Yeah. Uh, even if it's more than just a bagel, because it's really, <laughs> I find it very difficult as someone who loves to eat, maybe has an unhealthy relationship with food because I love it so much. Uh, I, find it, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I find it difficult to walk by the bakery or the popcorn carts and, and just not want to get something when you smell, smell is such a trigger for wanting to eat and, and boy, Disney does a great job of making you want to eat every time you walk by something with with all that deliciousness uh, coming out of it. Uh, so if you're full, though, you're a little bit less likely to say, hey, I want to go grab a, a Gaston cinnamon roll or a, a Mickey cinnamon bun from the from the bakery. So eat some. Bre <laughs> yeah. Which are mass massive se sewer covers. Uh so, you know, eat before you go. One other thing we do is, you know, obviously we like to carry backpacks, even if it's just Jackie and I, or if we're the big, so we have, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm lucky. I have a couple, what I'm looking right at them here on the shelf. They're uh, insulated refrigerator, like not refrigerated, but insulated backpacks. Okay. So we, we order the water and we, we have, we constantly have at least four to six water bottles frozen so yeah. that we throw them in the backpack as our, our, uh, our uh, cooling. Mm-hmm. Te yep. cooling technique and that way we can throw snacks whether it be fruit or things okay. that you might not normally be able to bring in there and and utilize that method as well but uh still like to go to the restaurants every so often so yeah and disney Budget. is actually really great at theme park and allowing you to bring in whatever food that you want to do Crazy that's pretty drink. uncommon yeah. in a lot of theme parks okay yeah so so that is one credit that you have to give the mouse that they yeah. have not like totally squinched down on but all their competitors have so yeah, yeah and, good when you, point. and when you tell people that that disney allows you to that are not normal disney people they're like baffled that you can bring as much in as you can bring in they, they just don't believe it because as you stated they're one of the very few that allow that so mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay anna any thoughts here yeah, I mean, we do a lot of the same thing, um, ordering through Amazon, which is actually cheaper than the food and, and drinks and stuff where we live. Um, and so we'll, we'll order that. Um, we bring our own dry goods since we, we do drive. Um, and we try and do breakfast in the room. And then, you know, we've saved every week for, you know, quick service. And then I'll use the Disney visa um, for sit down restaurants because uh, one of the waiters told me that one time that your alcohol, you can actually get 10% off on your alcohol with the Disney Visa where uh, our APs or DVC does not get discount oh. on alcohol. Um, and then we also do the uh, life straw bottles because it takes the Florida skank, as you said, out of <laughs> yeah. the out of the taste because I just I refuse to pay for water in, in a park. So um, and those have been amazing because you just fill them up at all the water fountains or quick service. And um, there is no taste when you drink okay. out of them. OK, see, now I drink a um, like a zip fizz for vitamin B12 because I'm deficient in that and a bunch of other vitamins. So I will buy a Disney Dasini water, but I always go to a gift shop where I can get 20 percent off mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then I pay for yeah. it with my card. So I'm really paying about three bucks just under per bottle. All things said and done. But I can't put the little vitamin stuff in those water filter bottle things because it oh, just clogs yeah. up the filter. Right. But it's it's a great alternative if, if that's not your your need or your MO there. So, yeah, th th that's a great deal. And Amy's making a feeding off my Florida skank water. And she was just like, uh, Chad, my pet, my grandparents had the skank water in Polk County. 
So there you go. Like uh, may, maybe I'm vindicated in calling it Florida skank water, but <laughs> I swear to God, they just like stick a straw in the Everglades or something and like pump it up and here you go. Um, and then uh, picking up some of the other comments here, Federica says, sure, platinum cards are good and you can deduct a card as a business expense. That is very true. I did not think of that and I just did my taxes. So I've got a, another little <laughs> pro tip that I learned this one as well. And Gina says, at Alani and at most of the villas, um, at Alani at the villas, most meals used gift card for quick. She just changed it on me. I <laughs> didn't even finish that sentence. So, um, Oh, um, oh, I know what it is because I was at Alani with her and her husband. Her husband's an amazing chef and he actually trained as a chef. And he does some amazing meals in the one bedrooms at Alani. And then she uses gift cards for the quick serve um, uh, as a way to save. So that one was like some back in the files from this June, Gina. <laughs> Somebody on uh, Facebook says sometimes you can get discounts with your DVC membership as well, that the blue card benefits or the membership extras. And Frederica wants to know what the name of your water, your reusable water bottles are. Life straw. Yeah. So life straws. And I have heard of those and I think I discounted them for the simple fact that I can't mix you know, my yeah. vitamins in, or a lot of times I'll do the little crystal light packs, which would totally clog up the filters on those as well. And that's a good way to try to cover up the skank water as well. But I did get a Coke zero at Casey's the other night and all I could taste was skank water or Coke. Like it was so disappointing. <laughs> Just uh, so disappointing. I don't know if it was the ice that didn't get filtered right or the Coke that didn't get filtered right, but it was just disappointing. And and then Amy is saying uh, Britta also has a, a water mm -hmm. bottle that can filter the water and she has one from Target as well. Yeah. And I don't think those are as, as expensive as the life straw ones. Yeah. So and the other pro tip I would, life straw for yeah, <laughs> as a local who's been shopping here now, I would go to a Walmart to buy your groceries or stay out of Publix. Publix is an amazing store. Okay. Don't get me wrong. They are the Disney of grocery stores, but you pay through the nose, right? Yeah. Publix is not for yeah. the faint of wallet. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just say no. Nah. I, I, I go to Publix and buy what's on sale and that's my little trick there. And every week they, they have amazing subs. Like I'm, I'm a, a Publix pub sub addict now. And every week they have one on sale for about two or three bucks off. And they'd like completely blow Subway away for like six, seven bucks on sale. And that's, that's the sub I get. So that's my little pro tip for, for saving money there. If you want to go eat out property, get the, the Publix pub sub that's on sale. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that I've chased that squirrel, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up all of our questions tonight. We're caught up here on comments as well. And uh, any final thoughts here, Dan, before we, we, we wrap up this show? Uh, no, I think we covered a lot here. But uh, yeah, I think the Ron, you had mentioned discipline is key with a lot of this. I think just, uh, you know, making sure you're saving, whether whatever the means we talked about here, uh, I think uh, are, we, we've got some good tips. And it's it's always helpful to you know talk in the community here and share these ideas. And I appreciate a lot. Of, I've learned a lot from the community over the years here as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm actually shocked that the people that'll come back in and listen to the show and really like lean into it are the people who already do some of this stuff, but they'll give us an hour of their time just because if they learn one little trick, mm -hmm. that's one little more arrow in their quiver and they're going to drive more value and get more fun out of it. Cause yep. I, I realized a long time ago, it's half of this is the fun of doing it. Okay. <laughs> Ron, final thoughts. Yeah, uh, pounding the dead horse there. Just discipline, stick with it. Uh, if even if it seems like it would be lucrative to jump into some of these things, if you don't, if you don't enjoy it, or if you're not going to be able to follow through with it, don't don't bother doing it because it will, uh, as you stated, Chad, it will cost you in the long run. Because if you can't stick to the plan, then then uh, stick with what you can 
yeah make sure that you follow through with yeah anna final thoughts here yeah i'll just said you know chime in with everybody else just the, the discipline and making the plan and and you know just for people like me who who can't doesn't they'll have as much discipline <laughs> just you know the envelope method is mm-hmm. just such a great way to do it and just you know as i say hide my money but it's really just the envelope method of just having it in different accounts so that you 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 have what you have and you you budget it the way you need to yeah i'm a huge 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 fan of the envelope system it is a learning curve it is a lifestyle adjustment curve but if you can make that transition over to it it will work wonders for your personal finance and my number one tip in personal fr- finance is always the very first thing you have to pay is attention. It, it, it all boils down to pay attention, be focused, be on top of it, be intentional. And if you can do that with this, you can start to figure out what it is that you want to get out of Disney and what kind of memories you want to build for your family. Do the math on it, pay attention, work backwards and work it into your budget and go out there and, and create some great memories for your family. And as always, hopefully you learned something in today's show that will help you go out there and plan something for your family. And a huge shout out of thanks to the world of DVC and all of their subsidiary companies, DVC Resale Market, DVC Rental Store, which if you're listening to the show and you want to try DVC before you, you buy, renting points is a great deal. And Monera Financial as well. For, for those of you who in your value system and your lifestyle choose to finance a DVC contract, they're a great alternative and option for you if that's what you choose. So, and when they first sponsored the show, I was like, you guys, I, that's not in my value system. I can't do it, but I realize it is in other people's. So that's why I always present their, their deal in that way is I, I, I want to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm not paying 9% on a, on a Disney contract. Although I do think it can make sense when we've had these years where they went up 30, 40%. Like it, it, yeah, it's a crazy time with Disney, but um, thanks for tuning in everybody. We'll be back next week and we'll see you real soon. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Yep.